Well, let's talk about this issue. Sure. You ready? So you brought this complaint. It was served on on, on Monday. Just tell me, uh, you know, basically what this does. This seeks to foreclose for Jefferson Crossing. Um, Mr. Dulos had defaulted on the mortgage, uh, giving Gloria Farber notice that he was going to default in October of 2018. And when he defaulted, he knew that the Farbers had placed approximately $2.8 million as security with Mellon Bank for the mortgage. I don't even know if Mellon Bank wrote residential mortgages in this area. So when FOTUS defaulted, he knew that Gloria Farber was going to have to start making the mortgage payments. And ironically, it was interest only. So Gloria continued to pay those payments month in and month out. But we were bleeding. And in the meantime, uh, Gloria Farber is paying for FOTUS Dulos to live in that house, this palatial house, with his girlfriend. And he seemed to have the same lifestyle that he had had, travel, entertainment, etc. cetera, and, uh, but, quote, couldn't afford to make the mortgage payments. So we were forced to pay off the bank, and we've now taken an assignment of the bank's mortgage, and I'm foreclosing on the bank's first mortgage. So there's a first mortgage to the bank, there's a mortgage to the Farbers. There's a second mortgage, there was $500,000 second mortgage to the Farbers, which we believe has an approximate balance of $200,000. So between the approximate $2.3 million on the first and the $200,000 on the second, there's approximately $2.5 million owed effectively to the Farber family. So they had to, because you, as you said, they were bleeding, the bank's interest was ahead of theirs, but they had pledged some collateral. The bank was never intending to foreclose on the property in Farmington, Connecticut. All the bank had to do was take the money out of my client's cash and, and securities. I don't know, I, I assume it was a favor to Hilliard Farber to get the loan in the first place. And Hilliard, in effect, guaranteed the loan by putting up more than sufficient funds to cover the mortgage. So uh, the moment Dulos defaulted, of course, the bank contacted Gloria and said, we're looking to you to start making the payments. It would almost be a situation, I think a lot of people who watch this have probably very different financial circumstances than the Duloses and the Farbers. But it would almost be like a parent co-signing on a, a, a car loan or a mortgage. A absolutely. That's exactly what happened. And the bank was looking to the parent because the parent had actually put up effectively cash. So the bank is going to look to cash. It's not going to look to foreclose on a house in Farmington, Connecticut. One of the points that I think people, you know, a lot of people probably haven't gone through foreclosure. They've heard the term. They know that it happens, particularly if it's contested, which I suspect this will be to some degree. It can be a long, arduous process. First of all, I hope that this case will be assigned to Judge Noble, who now has the other two cases. I hope we can expedite it, but as you know, as a lawyer, you know very well that the process can be very arduous. I would hope, because Dulos claims he loves his kids so much, and he knows that ultimately this money is his children's inheritance, I would hope that he wouldn't contest repaying the money which ultimately will go to his children. The, if, if this house could be sold, if it could, there's other, there's things, he, there's actions he could take to, to expedite this process. Absolutely. Uh, he has the house on the market now. To the best of my knowledge, Jennifer was not a signatory on the agreement with the um, realtor to sell the house, which is curious in and of itself, and I think I have that deposition scheduled for perhaps uh, the end of the week. Um, but uh, the house has been on the market for many, many years and hasn't sold. What's your client's hope of, of, of getting some of this money back? Obviously, whatever money we can get back, we want to get back. We've made up our mind to try to hold on to the December 3, 2019 trial date that Judge Noble said that he would try to, to provide for us. Um, we're never going to get back every penny, but we want to get back as much as we possibly can. Uh, as I explained in court, uh, Dulos had recognized on his federal tax return for Ford Group, year in and year out, money outstanding to Hilliard Farber. 
And um, as late as the 2016 tax return, it reflected $1,740,000. That tax return wasn't filed until December, I'm sorry, it was filed in September of 2017. So by then, instead of referring to it as the Hilliard-Farber loan, they referred to it as the family loan. Well, when it came to his tax return for 2017, he wanted the accountant to change the $1,740,000 loan into equity. And since his then accountant refused to do it, he got another accountant who was willing to do it. So that now, if you looked at his 2017 tax return, it shows $1,740,000 as equity, his equity. And effectively, again, what ultimately would have been his children's inheritance. In your position as he took that wrongfully? Absolutely. How's your client doing? How's Gloria? How's the family? What can you tell us about that? Gloria is incredible. I speak to Gloria at least once, if not several times a week. I used to speak to her virtually every day. Uh, the children are doing great. She's providing for them. They're going to school, private school. Um, children are very, very busy. And every time I speak to her without even being physically in her presence, I know she has a smile on her face talking about the children. And that's what she cares about. That's, that's what's keeping her going. That's what's keeping her going, providing for those children. She has, she has either completed or is in the process of completing the conversion of her apartment in New York where each child will have their own individual bedroom. So she's doing everything possible, an 85-year-old lady, to provide for the welfare of those children. To your knowledge, is Fotis Dulos doing anything to provide for the welfare of those children? To my knowledge, he's not. In fact, when I asked him in his deposition if he was paying for any child support, he said no, he wasn't under any court order to do so. So the loving father determined that he didn't have to provide for his children. Any other points you want to make? No, but uh, as I indicated to you earlier, I became aware that Judge Heller in the family court had ruled back in, I think it was in March of 2018, in regard to one of the family issues. The court does not find the defendant, which was Fotis Dulos, to be credible. Fotis Dulos does not seem to appreciate in any respect the consequences of lying under oath and willfully violating a court order. His facility in testifying falsely to the court suggests he is equally comfortable in encouraging his children to lie to achieve his desired outcome. So that says everything. And just one more thing, don't worry sure. about the, we talked about, and I think it's too wonky of a legal issue for me to get into in a TV piece, but why Jennifer's not named in this, is your client's belief that Jennifer's dead? Um, I would say without a doubt it's our client's belief that Jennifer is dead. Um, it certainly is my belief. Um, it is certainly the belief of all of her friends and all the people that knew Jennifer and only wish that they could find a way to resolve um, this awful situation. And this is about as compelling a matter, this is my 50th year, as compelling a matter as I've ever been involved in the 50 years.